Hi, it's Rich Trotty with TMCNet. Thanks for watching. We're out in Silicon Valley this week, and it's our uh, Editor's Day where we talk to some of the best and brightest companies uh, in the Silicon Valley area. It's uh, November 2016, and Sam Fell's with us, and he's with a company called Electric Cloud, and uh, welcome back. Thanks How for having you? me. Yeah, good. Thanks for having me back. So uh, start at the top. Tell us about Electric Cloud, what you guys do. So Electric Cloud is a software solutions provider. We help companies move software in a very predictable way through the application lifecycle. We get rid of a lot of the, the nervousness and stress around releasing applications into whatever your production environment is. We also help you manage the process of getting it through all the different approval gates, all the different testing, all the different things you need to do to make sure it's fit for human consumption. Very cool. And what pain do you take away for customers? So customers would like to be able to ship product more frequently. If they're working on a feature, that feature is only available to a customer once it's out in production. Problem is a lot of companies out there, they're having a hard time moving that software into production because of all the different work that's happening and all the different testing that needs to happen. Uh, they're afraid to push it into production because sometimes things break. Operations people don't like stuff to change. So if you can figure out a way to model those applications, which is what Electric Cloud does, our Electric Flow software, we help you model those applications, model the environments, model the process that you're using. Then you could reuse that and rehearse it in testing, in development, in staging. And then once you're wanting to go to production, you've been rehearsing it. So it's going to work. And regardless of what environment you want to play it into. So because we've modeled the application, we've modeled the different environments, you can move that workload for the developers, maybe it's on a local box, for a testing per person, maybe they want to do it in Amazon, for uh, production, maybe they have a OpenStack instance inside their enterprise. There's no requirement for them to go in and change anything. The operator just says, I'd like to deploy this version of this application to this environment, and it works. Oh, very cool. Great, now are there any uh, types of companies that are more likely to be customers than others? It's interesting, we were at the DevOps Enterprise Summit last week, which we're a founding partner with Gene Kim. Uh, fantastic uh, event where very large organizations come and they're trying to figure out how to get the cultural aspect of DevOps going in their company. Along with that is a lot of work on tooling and having the right products available to help your teams. It's, I use the analogy of if you like camping, if you're not a camping person and you go camping, if you have a tent that leaks, you're probably not going to want to go camping again. DevOps is a little bit like that. You want people to collaborate with one another. You want them to be able to do better work together. If you don't give them the right tools to be able to do that, it's very difficult for those two teams to come together. Developers inherently want to change things. Operations folks inherently don't want things to change. So you need to give them some common language, some common control and visibility to allow them to move those changes through the pipeline in a better, more predictable fashion. So is, is DevOps, uh, wh where is DevOps on the um, hype cycle right now? Um, DevOps is probably about the, the top of the hype cycle. Um, it is, there's a lot of great information that Gene and Puppet Labs and those folks, the Dora folks with Nicole Forgegren have done to prove the value of this cultural shift. There's a lot of different ways of getting to DevOps. All of it starts with people. Um, getting the, the, the value, the long tail, going through the trough of disillusionment, I think we'll probably go through that pretty quickly with DevOps. Because again, it's not about a tool. It's about a way of working, uh, getting towards the ability to continuously deliver high quality software into production environments. When is that trough coming? It's next year, I would imagine, right? Uh, uh, so I know I've looked at research from a bunch of folks. Um, uh, I don't think that it's coming anytime soon, that trough. I think okay. that we're going to be in the little hypey area for a while. Okay. You start to see people cloud washing stuff. You start to see people DevOps washing stuff. I guess the, the thing to really be focused on if you are a, a large enterprise or an enterprise and is trying to figure out how to help your developers move faster because your competition is doing it. I was mentioning this DevOps Enterprise Summit, what verticals care about it. Uh, we were an executive luncheon where we had a couple of um, uh, analysts were in this luncheon as well as Gene Kim, and a lot of the folks were in there saying, well, I had no idea that there would be so many other of these financial services company at this event. And I pretty plainly stated to the guy, I'm like, well, if you're doing it because you need to get ahead, your competitors are doing it as well. And so we see a lot of activity in financial services, we see a lot of activity in, um, in high-tech manufacturing, um, a lot of activity in services firms. So there's just a ton of activity across the board. The folks who are comfortable with software, they're picking this up much faster because they realize the incredible benefits, that acceleration of benefit that you can get 
out in DevOps. Great. Can you share any of your news with us? Absolutely. So at the show last week, we announced uh, additions to our platform. It's a single platform that, again, allows you to model these applications, the environments, all those things. We've added the ability for you to now model uh, microservices as part of that exact same pipeline. So if you have a big monolithic application, which pretty much everybody out there is going to have, and you're trying to decompose those applications into microservices, the microservices then become something that you need to manage. You have to manage the pipeline of not one monolithic application, now you have maybe 100 microservices. And so the coordination aspect of that becomes really problematic for large companies. They're afraid that if I deploy this, will, I have, will it have been tested with the thing that needed to have been tested it with? And so uh, our product allows you to very easily combine those streams together, make sure that the testing is being done, get the approvals that you need for, you know, it's mil-spec kind of stuff as far as security. No one gets access to this environment unless I tell them that they're allowed to. No one has access to run this pipeline. They can't go around the pipeline. Um, automotive customers that we have, you know, they have to be able to reproduce whatever it is that they built for 15 years. And so you can't have people going around parts of the process just because they want to go faster or just because they don't, uh, you know, whatever, they don't think that it's relevant. You have to make sure that you enforce that. And we allow them to do that now for their monolithic applications as well as their microservices. Great. Do we leave anything out as we close up? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Appreciate being invited back. Yeah. Well, thanks again. And then how do uh, people find you? Uh, you can hit us on the website, electriccloud.com, electric-cloud.com would be probably the best way to get in touch. Awesome. Thanks for being here. All right, Rich. Thank you.